This is just a small YouTube channel, so I do make an attempt to answer every comment. It's not as if I've got millions of subscribers and I'm getting thousands of comments a day. I don't get that many, so I try to answer them. But when some comments come in, I either don't know how to answer them or I just think they're not worthwhile answering. This comment came in a little while ago about the Epson V600 um, photo scanner. Basically, the guy said, it's total crap, don't buy one. My first response was just to reply saying, it's not crap. But then someone coming to watch this video who's thinking of buying one will see the two comments and won't know who to believe. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to scan in small negatives and give people some examples to look at and let them decide for themselves whether it's crap or not. But it's actually a much bigger subject than just deciding whether a product is crap or not. The, the chemical process of film photography goes back to the late 19th century. And films aren't great. You know, the, the, um, compared to sort of, you know, current digital sensors, the, the resolution of detail isn't great. And when I used to do a lot of film photography, I just used Kodak, uh, Kodak Gold film and I, I didn't use professional lenses. So my images aren't fantastic. So whatever scanner you've got, you're, you're not, get, you're not gonna make perfect images from imperfect negatives. That, that's one point. The second point is that does image quality really matter to, to most people? Now, I, I bought this because I, I, have, I went back to the UK where I used to live and I managed to get hold of some of my old negatives and they've got a lot of memories. So then I, I wanted a scanner so I could scan them all in again and, and relive the memories. And that's what most people will be doing. They will have boxes of negatives somewhere in the house and they'll think, oh, okay, it's about time that I, I digitize those negatives just to get the, the memories back. And those memories will involve people um, who, are, who are no longer here, relatives that have passed on. There'll they'll, they'll be images of past vacations from long ago that you've almost forgotten about. You know, and all, all those memories will come back. And it's an emotional thing when the memories come back. Now, if, if you look at an old photo uh, of someone that's no longer here, and there's a bit of grain, or it's not quite in focus, or there's some dust and scratches, or some vignetting, or anything, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's all about the memories. So this, this, um, this comment, quite upset me actually uh, one I didn't know how to respond to it and it just opens up like a, a big can of worms anyway um, as I said I'm gonna say I'm just going to give you some examples of scanned images using this scanner in this video so you can take a look and decide for yourself before I begin I'll just give you a brief technical update and from around 1981 to 2000, I used a Canon E1. In 2000, I got myself a used Canon C90, which I absolutely loved. And I used that up until around the end of 2003 when I moved to Thailand. Uh, when, I, when I made that move from the UK, I left all my film gear at home and then started building a digital system. Most of the time, I just used to use Kodak uh, gold, um, sometimes 100 but mostly 200 ISO because with the 100 it gave me quite slow shutter speeds and all the images you're going to see were scanned in using the Epson V600 photo scanner. I had quite a good selection of Canon FD manual focus lenses, some of which are still back in the UK unfortunately. But the two I tended to use most of the time were a Canon FD 28mm f2.8 and a Canon FD 70-210 f4 zoom. There are just so many advantages with digital photography. Fantastic images, fantastic detail, fantastic resolution, the ability to change ISO on the fly, fantastic low light level performance, 
the ability to store thousands of images on an SD card instead of being limited to 36 frames on a roll of film. And with digital, we get all of the exposure information embedded in the file, which is absolutely great. Now, when I was shooting film, I never used to make a note of the aperture and shutter speed, so I, I can't give you that information. On a few shots, you, you'll get an idea. On some waterfall shots, I have deliberately used a very slow shutter speed to try and make the water blurry. And on other shots, the depth of field might give you an idea, but I can't give you any, any accurate values. It's the same with dates. All photos were taken between 1981 and 2003 but I can't give you any exact dates. Now with some images, we do have a few clues. Uh, in this very grainy image of London, they're just putting the final touches to the Gherkin building, which was finished at the end of 2003. So I guess this was mid 2003, and it's probably one of my last visits into London before I moved to Thailand. I've been fortunate enough to have visited New York City a few times, but again, I can't tell you the exact dates. All I can tell you about this photo is that it was taken before September the 11th, 2001. That's enough of me talking, so let's now look at some of the scanned in images. And with these images, you will see faults, you will see imperfections. There are scratches, there's dust, there's grain. I didn't do a huge amount of post-processing. I just used the auto mode in Epson Scan to get them into the computer. I didn't do much processing in Epson Scan. I ran them through Adobe Photoshop, but I didn't do a huge amount there either. As I said, this is really about reliving memories and it's an emotional experience. I don't want to get too hung up on image quality. So look at the images and then let me know what you think.
Well, what do you think? Is the Epson V600 crap? I won't say anymore, just make up your own minds. And he also makes a comment about digitizing your negatives using a macro extension tube and a DSLR. Now this is a very time consuming process. You'll need a light table or something to give yourself very even backlight on the negatives. You'll then need to use a light stand or something to make sure that your digital sensor is exactly parallel with your negative. This is because using a macro lens there's such a narrow depth of field that if it's not parallel one part of the image will be in focus but the rest won't. In post processing you'll need to remove the orange cast from the negative and then you'll need to convert the negative to a positive. This all takes a lot of time and if you've got thousands of old negatives at home going through every one doing it this way is just completely impractical and it will take you forever. Scanning in thousands of negatives isn't a quick process even using the Epson scanner but with the Epson scan software you can do 12 at a time and it's all automatic so it's far far quicker than using a DSLR and a macro extension lens. Please leave any comments, questions or other feedback below and thank you for watching.